Hi, my name is Cora Luce, and for this video I wanted to talk about one of my favorite subjects, organic chemistry. This is a field within chemistry that deals specifically with molecules that contain carbon bonded to hydrogen, which is a lot of molecules. Sugar, propane, fats, DNA, and even soap are just some of the many examples. There's even more interesting co organic compounds such as caffeine and aspirin, but if I listed them all we would be here for ages. Since there are so many compounds, there are also many ways in which they react and undergo different processes, causing organic chemistry to have a lot of components to it. So instead of talking about the field as a whole, I want to narrow in on one very specific but important reaction called photooxidation. You've probably unknowingly seen this process occur before with old genes, road signs, and dyes in general, where over time the color fades until it becomes almost white. What is happening is that the organic dyes within these objects are slowly being degraded by sunlight, or rather UV light, and oxygen in the air until their structure is completely changed. Why this specifically occurs has to do with molecular orbitals and resonance, but that goes beyond the scope of this video. So if you'd like to know more about it, I suggest either of these resources which explain it in more detail. So why does this process matter? Well, to explain that, I first need to talk about soil. Over time, plant and animal matter decompose within soil until they're broken into these very tiny organic fragments. This makes the soil become rich with carbon. Let's say that you have some of this carbon-rich soil, and you dig a hole in it and fill that hole with water. If you leave that hole for a while, organic matter from the soil will seep into that water and eventually turn it brown. Even after filtering that water, the color will remain, which is due to the organic matter that dissolved into the water, also known as dissolved organic carbon, or DOC. When DOC is exposed to sunlight and oxygen, it will undergo the photooxidation process, which results in it producing a bleached version of DOC and, more importantly, carbon dioxide, one of the greenhouse gases. Normally, the amount of carbon dioxide produced from this process is small, because most soil doesn't contain enough carbon to matter. However, in the Arctic, there is soil which has been permanently frozen for many, many years, preserving its contents. This soil is referred to as permafrost, and the organic buildup from thousands of years of being frozen makes this preserved soil incredibly carbon-rich. The issue is that as the world temperature has been rising, this permafrost is being thawed, allowing the built-up organic matter to seep into pools of water that can be exposed to sunlight and oxygen. This then produces large amounts of carbon dioxide, increasing Earth's temperature even more. So this creates this positive feedback loop, and it's become an increasingly larger issue as more permafrost has been rapidly thawing in recent years. In the future, I want to use the information of how this process occurs to help combat it. So far, I and some of my classmates have been helping our organic chemistry teacher create a lab that demonstrates this reaction and its effects. Using tea as a replacement for a permafrost sample, we see how the UV light bleaches the tea over time. This lab will hopefully become a way to educate more students on what is happening with permafrost. Although this is just something small for now, I want to continue to pursue this in the future with what I learn in college to help slow the rate of global warming.